I get to the bar and I start lifting it. And initially I thought to myself, uh, it's not as good as it feels probably. I start putting on the first plate, second plate, third plate. And I realized, oh my God, something is happening here. I feel like a different human being. It's been something like two weeks since the last time I deadlifted. So it's kind of, you know, relatively speaking, somebody that squats every day and you know, generally deadlifts three times a week or two times a week. I feel like I'm rusty when it comes to this, even though it's only been two weeks. But I've almost kind of forgotten how it feels to deadlift, to, to be in that position. But as the plates, you know, kept piling on, I kept feeling more and more power. For the first time in my life, I felt like I didn't have to work hard to get the quads into the push, the initial push. Uh, automatically, my mind lights up and I start thinking about what has caused this feeling, this here. Automatically, I'm like, dude, you have, you've rested for a long time. You haven't done any pulling for a long time. But the initial pull aspect or the initial push rather, the initial part of the deadlift is a push in my eyes. And I know a lot of you guys uh, use different cues and would disagree with this. A lot of people say that it's, it's a pull from the get-go. I've always felt and I've always you know, liked the idea of thinking to myself, I'm going to push the earth away and all I'm really doing is holding onto the bar. So that complete reversal of physics of that understanding of what's really happening. But today was the first time that I felt like the quads, there was no need for me to kind of bias my positioning in such a way to get the quads into the play. For some time now, probably three or four days, every single day, I've had very light doms in my quads. Now, I've said many, many times to you guys that I freaking never feel any soreness in my quads. If I push my squats, I generally feel them in the adductors, sometimes kind of in that high, high hamstring, low glute, that time. That's where I get kind of tight or, or sore. In the last few days, as you guys know, probably four or five days, all I've freaking done is sets of 10. Lots and lots of sets of 10. Lots of sets of 10 on the way up. And even more, after I've hit the daily single for the day, I'll go back down and do some more 10s. 5s at 160, 10s at 140, 10s at 100 kilos. And I get to the bar for the first time in two weeks, and I'm like, this deadlift is so freaking easy. For the first time, I'm like, the, the struggling part of the deadlift is not the initial pull. Or I keep saying initial pull, the initial push. It was, a, it was a really, really powerful moment for me. Now, I get to four plates and four plates feels like it is literally nothing in my hands. I felt like I could clean the damn thing. Now, obviously, I can't clean 180. That's, that's freaking a lot of weight to clean. But I just had that weird you know, feeling that, I, that I've kind of discovered something drastic in my body. You know, when you're lifting every single day, when you're squatting every single day, when you're deadlifting so often, you know what every piece of weight is going to feel like. You know what 60 feels like, 100, 140. Today, I was like, man, I kept looking at the bar and I'm like, man, what is going on here? Are these plates like half the weight today or something? I felt that strong. I put five plates on and it moves like nobody's business. And I'm like, oh my Lord, I might get a PR today. I put six plates on. So I'm doing big ass jumps now. Like I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. So from five to six plates. And I start pulling the six plates like on the, on the ground as I'm doing the, the prep. And if you guys have noticed, I've, I'm doing these kneeling deadlifts with a pause at the top. Because I kept thinking to myself, I can't believe how light this feels in my hands. I can't believe how much power I have today. So I put six plates on and I start pulling and I get out of position and my, my, uh, I basically multiplied the weight on the bar because I let my shoulders escape. The shoulders rolled forward and I lost my positioning. At that point, I could have, you know, could have saved the lift, but I would have just been like in a bad position all the way through. I would have been pulling in a bad compromised position. And I'm feeling, man, I might have 270, 280 on this, on this thing, man. And I here I'm getting out of position at 260. So it was a head scratcher moment. After I did this lift, I sat there for about 20 minutes and I kept thinking about watching the video, analyzing what I just went through. I can't believe how easy the thing was in a kneeling deadlift. Now, again, I do this a lot. I know what it feels like, a kneeling deadlift of 260. This thing felt like a damn joke, man. I felt like I was going to rip the damn bar and the plates were going to be left on the ground. That's how, that's how strong I felt. And then I start pulling, jump on my feet, I start pulling, and I'm like, what's going on, man? Like, it's almost like somebody's added another plate while I wasn't looking. He just didn't want to go. 
And so I'm sitting there looking at the video, analyzing what's happening. Was it a positional thing? Did I not respect the weight? You know, in my mind, I was thinking 280, which is a crazy jump of 15 kilos for a PR. I probably wouldn't have done that. I probably would have just settled for 270. But I'm thinking, did I not pay respect to 60? And that's why it kind of caught me a guard. But you can see here, I start pulling automatically. I lose positioning. My, my ass starts to rise. And I'm like, in this moment, I'm like, I screwed up. Screwed up. I just let it go. I, I probably could have got it. But in my mind, I'm thinking 270 is next. And 260 cannot feel like this, man. Why is it feeling like this? It was like a hot and cold moment, man. Like I was, it's like somebody poured a, a, a cold bucket of water, man. Like just on top of me, I was like, well, shit, I didn't see this coming, man. For the whole like 20 minutes that I was living up to that moment, I was like, my Lord, I'm feeling strong. And then I get to 60 and I miss it. And I'm like, man, what's going on? Like, why, why did my shoulders unpeel like that? Why did I lose my positioning? Did I not brace enough? My mind started racing anyway. After 20 minutes, I was like, screw it, let's go to squats. And so I went to squats with the sour taste in my mouth that I basically missed an opportunity to do a PR today. Uh, for the first time in my life, oh man, for the first time in my life, I am somebody that's now squatting every single day and I'm feeling my quads every single day. Now, <laughs> we can get into the whole thing, what's weak, what's, what needs work, how you fail your squats, can you grind, can you not grind, all the stuff that I've spoken about before. I cannot believe to say this, but in my mind right now, I'm thinking through all of the thoughts that I've had in the past. You don't need Bulgarian split squats. You don't need lunges. You don't need any freaking unilateral leg movements. You don't need, you don't need leg extensions. You don't need pin squats. You don't need any of these things to try and get the quads into play. Pin squats for another reason. But you don't need that aspect of the pin squats for the quads. You just got to do more damn reps. This is where it gets so frustrating for me when we start comparing these different things. Oh man, you know, I, I feel my quads a hell of a lot more when I do Bulgarian split squats. Oh, okay. So how many Bulga how many how many reps do you do in Bulgarian split squats? Oh, I do something between like 10 and 20. Okay. And so how many do you do with the squats? Oh, I do like one, two, three, four, five, something like that. Less than five always. So what the hell are we talking about here? So you're saying the Bulgarian split this is me talking to myself. You're saying the Bulgarian split squats work your quads more when you do 10 to 20 reps, but you don't feel your quads work when you do zero to five or one to five reps in squats, barbell squats. Why don't you just do the damn same reps for both exercises and then draw conclusions, man? Why are you comparing apples and oranges and pears and lemons and freaking whatever fruit you want? If you're going to compare something, compare it properly. I'm not a freaking scientist with a PhD and a LPP and a ZDB, whatever the hell you want to put that letter in front of doctors, something. I don't have 50 freaking prefixes and suffixes and all this crap. I'm not a scientist. But when you're comparing something, for God's sake, compare it equally, man. I feel like smashing my head through a wall sometimes. So the Bulgarian split squats are not any damn different to the quads than the Bulgarian than the, the barbell squats. Because I didn't compare them properly. When I do sets of 10 with 100 kilos, my quads are freaking lit. I just never do the high rep shit, man. And I've had moments in my time especially in this training program, where I've had moments of high repetitions, sets, you know, the breathing squats and all that stuff that I did. That, that was a, that's what led me to the first 300 kilo. And I went away from it because I had hip pain and all this shit. Now I've sort of so solved the damn hip pain. So put all of your damn recovery points into these breathing squats. Do a thousand reps of 100 kilos. That's what you need. Screw the weight, man. For the first time, I, I, I go over to the, the, the bar. And I start lifting and I'm like, man, I'm all up in my quads and shit over here, man. I feel my quads. What did I do different in the last two weeks? I had a whole bunch of rest. But would that change my, my positioning? It wouldn't. What else has changed? I feel in my quads. I feel like my body has biased itself somehow. Changed its position. I feel like I can pull so much more off the ground. Such an interesting thought, man. This is where like, I've been kind of inkling telling you guys some of these ideas about high reps in the last few days. It feels crazy. It feels good. It feels crazy. I get to the deadlift today and I'm like, God damn, man. I felt like I had 280 in me today, man. Obviously, I haven't done deadlifts in two weeks. I'm rusty. I probably didn't emphasize enough the shoulder pinch. I didn't emphasize enough the core and all this stuff. I haven't lifted anything, man, for two weeks like that. The, the best thing I did was like 190 kilo squat the other day. But nothing in terms of a deadlift hip hinge pattern. 
damn. Here we go again, man. Here we go again. Ivan's going to pour thousands of freaking sets and reps into his squats. Sets of 10. Sets of 5 and above. You know, if I'll do 60 for, 160 for sets of 5 and I'll spend a lot of freaking time with 100 kilos. Today I did 130 kilos as back off sets to the 180 today. I just basically typed in 210 times by 0.6, 60%, and I got something close to 130, and I went, okay, let's do 130, and I, I spent a whole bunch of time with 60% today, three sets of 10 of that. On the way up today in the squat, I did five sets of 10 of 100, probably too much uh, as a warm-up, right? Way too much because they hurt my top end. 180 felt tired. Uh, my core was tired. Everything was tired. Uh, but, the you know, conversations I've had with you guys in the last few days over – how much you do on the way up and how much you do as a back off work. Uh, it just feels so damn good when I warm up like like crazy. Like freaking crazy. And these damn 100 kilo sets of 10 are translating to my deadlift, man. Translating to my... Don't worry about... You name it. Belt squats, Bulgarian split squats, lunges. Uh, what else is there that, that, that people do nowadays to, to hit their quads? Leg extensions... Deficit pulls, all this shit, man. And when we do these accessory lifts, we do them 10 plus reps. Why don't we do the actual exercise, the actual sport for 10 plus reps? And then compare that shit to the rest of the crap that we just mentioned. It's frustrating, man. It's an aha moment. It's an I'm onto something moment. It's It's profound. You guys can't feel what I felt today in the gym with the with the with the feeling that I felt like I I, I could pull 280. It's because it was day and night the feeling that I had the positioning that I had at the start. I was in my quads. It's really really weird, and I've not trained anything else, man. Like for the last freaking 12 days, what have I done, man? Just squat, nothing else, man. And I get to the bar and I'm like, I'm in my quads, man. I'm in my quads. My hamstrings are probably asleep and all that stuff. Like I haven't done any accessory stuff for them. So the only thing that I'm thinking is, I just did a whole lot of light squats, man. Lots of light squats. Yes, of course, I'm probably rested a little bit in my rectus and whatever. But last four or five days, what have I done? I've worked quite hard, to be honest. Lots of 160s, sets of five. Lots of 140s, basically every single day for sets of 10. Lots of 100 kilos for sets of 10. That's not a rest, man. I'm working hard, man. I'm huffing and puffing like crazy. And then I get to the deadlift bar and it feels like it's super light. So this is the plan. This is the template for moving forward. I'm going to be doing sets of 10. Freaking sets of 20. I don't care. I remember Tom Platt saying, how do you get big legs? Pick a weight. Do, do 60 kilos. Do off a set of 50. Yeah, that's right. Set of 50. What the hell is that? Sets of 50. How long does that take? 50 hours. Finally, you get to set of 50. Once you master the 60 kilo, go to 80 kilos. Try and get that for 50. It might take you several months. You get that to 50 kilos. Breathing squats, right? So you never rack the bar. You're sitting there. You're breathing. Then you get to 100. You 140. Yeah, man, like I think he did like 400 pounds. I might be butchering the shit out of this, but Tom Platt used to do like 400 pounds for a set of 50 or something like that. It would take him like several minutes or 160. I can't remember exactly, but he did some stupid reps. I know with 500 pounds, he did... I think 27 reps or something like that. So it's probably correct that he did 400 uh, for a set of 50. Anyway, man, shaking my head over here. I'm thinking about all of this. It was a profound moment today, man. I've never lifted 220 effortlessly like that in my life. And it felt like I could do 280 today, I swear, but I, I screwed it up. I'm rusty. I've got a name to mention today, and I've got to apologize to this name, John Krause. Um, he messaged me today and he was like, man, I've, I've signed up to the Patreon. I haven't heard anything back from you. I don't know how I overlooked your name, man. John Kraus, man, I apologize for not putting your name up on the, on the, on the list. Um, that really annoyed me, man. I want to tell you, I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. This is the only time that's happened, um, that somebody's jumped on the list onto the Patreon and I've somehow missed it. And, and I don't know, I don't know what happened, but I want to thank you. And I want to apologize to you for this. Um, means means the world to me that you've done this, man. And it, it kind of hurts me that I didn't show the same appreciation back. <sighs> Thank you, John. Thank you to everyone else on the Patreon list, YouTube comments, Instagram. You guys are champs. And I freaking love making these videos and sharing these aha moments with you, man. And, and I, I can't wait for the comments. Can't wait for you guys to tell me 
what what you think about all of this stuff. It's I love this stuff. You guys can probably tell that I freaking get excited about this stuff. This is a passion. This is my it. This is my crazy little project for life. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.